viewers. I thought I'd do a reasonably short video uh, about a couple of purchases I've just made. And this, first of all, about the Trispade. This is the size 22 meat grinder or mincer. Now, the reason I wanted to do a video about it is partially because I love it. And secondly, uh, I think this is perfect for the home environment for people that are wanting to make a reasonable amount of sausage meat, meatball meat, whatever you want to grind. So I keep this in the freezer. I don't know if you can see, but there's a hall frost on this. Now the reason I keep it in the freezer is because when you're bringing this into the kitchen and you're putting meat, uh, really ideally you should be grinding meat that is almost semi-frozen just to keep it nice and room safe. So if you're gonna put the meat in there, because this is forcing things, it causes a level of friction, and that level of friction warms the meat up. So if this is an iceberg, which this day is seriously an iceberg for ages, uh, you're doing what I think is a good hygiene manoeuvre. It comes with an eight millimetre plate, which is that one, and that's, most people would think that's quite a coarse plate. As far as I'm concerned, uh, the supermarket mince is ground so finely, probably on a three, four mil plate, and it just turns into dust. It's disgusting. So when you take control and get your own grinder like this, you can grind it how the heck you like. So if you wanted really fine mince, you could have the eight on there and put it through three times. That would sort it. But um, this is a 10 mil, and I want to use that for uh, making uh, salamis and chorizo, that type of meat. The eight I've used to make breakfast sausages, things like that. So this is a perfectly good sausage stuffer also. It comes with these uh, modem, which is a type of um, polypropylene, food safe. So this is cast iron tin, hot tin dipped, I believe, which is quite an expensive product these days. But when you buy one of these, it's uh, it's really an heirloom. I mean, this is stuff that you're gonna hand down to your grandkids or you know leave it in your will, because it's a beast. Um, the plates wear out and the knife behind wears out, but um, the thing itself is just here forever. Uh, so it's a, for just under a hundred pounds, it's a, it's a long distance, nice thing to have. You'd have to be making an awful lot of mince to uh, want to go to electric version, I think, because the, the leverage on this is just nonsense. You can put anything in there. You could you could stuff a cow's leg in there and it would grind it. Nothing, <laughs> once it gets past a certain point, there's nothing stopping this thing. So, quality-wise, excellent. Uh, now, just another tip if you didn't know about these things, is when you're turning this against the putting pressure on your plate, so you've got, you've got your plate that sits there. Okay, that's blinking cold. And behind that sits the blade. That's called a spade. I think that's three swords or three knives. It's actually got four. Uh, that's stainless, and these are all stainless. So you can imagine when that's set there and it's going along like that, there's a friction there. Uh, metal against metal, well, it's like a car and an engine. If you haven't got any lubricant, it will cause wear. So a little tip is when you first get going on your grinding, Just really put it on slack like that, almost so it's just hovering. So the plate and the knife is just literally floating off e each other. So the first bit of meat that goes in there, a little bit of it's going to be sacrificial, and that fat on that mate, choose a fatty bit if you can find it, will act as the first bit of lubricant between the knife and the uh, plate. And then once you've done that little bit of sacrificial stuff, just crank that up a little bit and stop it. You don't need any more friction than that. You don't have to go crazy on it. The more you do that, the more you're pushing metal into metal. It's really not necessary. So that's a little tip. The reason I didn't just stick with this, because this is an all-in-one mincer sausage maker, and I've made plenty of sausage with these, and it's really rather good. But for making chorizos and things like that, the action that's in the auger it, it smears the fat. Now, it's not a very nice expression, but that's exactly what it does. The, the screw pushing it through 
grinds, even before it comes out here, grinds the meat and the fat together, smearing it. Well, if you're making things like chorizo, that's not something particularly desirable. You want the chunks to remain individual, the fat bits and the meat. Because you can imagine when you cut through a, a salami or a chorizo, you can see the individual bits. They're not all mashed up like a breakfast sausage. So this is great, but even if I put it through the 10 mil plate, which I will, I want everything coming out ground at that size. I don't want it to alter any more than that. I mean, you can get 14 mil, 16 mil, and kidney plates for this. But I found 10 mil makes a perfectly acceptable uh, chorizo. So that's good. Take the meat of ground out of there, not using these. And I bought that. I'm doing another video about that sausage stuffing. So I can take the mince of the ground, put it into that, and fill my chorizo or salami cases. So that's the reason I got both. Uh, when you first uh, put your first bit of sacrificial meat foot through, don't have this too tight. Uh, you just need to allow it a bit of fat or a bit of meat to get between the blade and the plate, so it acts as a lubricant. And once you've done that, you can just crank it up like that. And then off you go. And you can see, this thing takes no prisoners. <laughs> Amazing. So that grind there is really coarse. And you can imagine in your chorizo, all the little chunks and things that are desirable in chorizo. It's kind of a, like a little vision of it there. Might be, maybe you see it there. So this is 10 mil blade. So I'm just going to get on with this because I really don't like it getting warm. You need to disperse it with some fat so you're getting it. I think you can get the gist of it. This thing won't mess about. Thought I'd give you a quick demo of just how this thing gobbles stuff up. Even a chunk as ridiculous as that. supposed to use something like that instead of your fingers. Just in case you're interested, after all that mincing that I did, um, let's just see what the temperature of the mincer still is. Not bad at all, considering how much it's just done. Um, four, five, six, seven, eight kilos. All right, just thought I'd do a little supplementary aside here and give you some dimensions and, and pull this thing down so you can see what its constituent parts are. So the bar barrel length is eight and a half inches or 21.5 centimeters. The throat, four and three quarters or 12 centimeters by 
0.5 centimeters or five and three quarters. The opening across here, it's 9.5 or three and three quarters. Now the plate, is 82.5 mil. I actually measured it, it looks closer to 82 actually, but that's the size necessary. There's a little keyway there and that sits like that. And this is the 10 mil plate that I used for making chorizo. So something to have interest here, this blade is very, very cleverly designed. So it sits there on the shaft turns like that, that way, but it's the shape is key because if you look at the side section of it, there's a little recess in there. So that's the cutting face along there, razor sharp those, and in many ways it's self sharpening. You will dig a ridge in there at some point and I don't know if you can see the scorings on there from mincing. So the scoring means there's some metal particulate or some metal dust somewhere. So where did it go? Did it go into your meat? Well, the design of this blade, the very shape of it, in its action, it's drawing, because of the shape, like a propeller, any filings into this little cavity behind. So when you wash up, because you look at this thing and think, where's all the filings coming through? It's just nothing ever comes through. You'll find the meat that's here will have a, a dark grey hue to it, which is the, um, the oxides or, or the very fine particulate coming off the blade. Very clever, that. So it's not putting it into your food, it's putting it into this little cavity. So after you've done about five or six kilos, you could knock the blade out and give it a wash if you felt like it. But we're talking about minuscule particles here. And this is stainless steel. So this is cast iron body, as I said before. Um, hot dipped tin plate, I believe. I looked on the Trispade website, it, it says tin plate, but it doesn't say whether it's hot dipped or not. But I presume it is. The screw. That's a lump. So it's got a big mouth here. So when you put that, I'll just before that, there's a kind of a thrush washer there. That's a, that's a nylon, I think. So that's like it's thrust bearing, um, to, so you don't start grinding on metal to metal. It's also a little bit of a seal. It's very basic, but that actually shape of that's quite critical. It's an important shape. And then it goes in there. When you're, when you're handling this thing, tin plate, it looks like it's part of the, you know, the, the the permanence of it, but it actually, you can wear it off. So you just need to be careful that you're not bashing it around. It's minimal. So that sits in there. So the action, when you're turning, it's pushing it into there. So that's where that's the danger zone with your finger. So if you if you if you're messing around with this, use a plunger and not your finger because it it doesn't have bite quick. So then. All you have to do, stick your blade on that nice little square, it sits there like that. This is double sided these plates. That's that, that's safe to leave there. And that's your clamping screw. of course another cast iron thing tin plated um, that's Moden Moden um, polyethylene type of food safe plastic one of, one of the polyethylenes and that's got a, a notch in it there and that sets it screw
stuff, basic stuff. Nothing else to say.